All right, good afternoon and welcome to our channel. My name is Jay, I'm the owner of Section 8 Consulting.com and uh, we work with a lot of clients to help solve problems with their housing and vouchers and dealing with uh, the housing authority and even landlords. But today's topic is a rather dire one. We see a net, but another example of a housing authority that has operated with almost impunity and has been allowed to reach or escalate to a point where they're unable to even effectively manage their own housing authority. And that's even with the feds, the city, the mayor, and many others likely uh, pro uh, pro proactively reaching out to them and then probably not getting a great response. And so we have people living in rat and roach infested places. And all this came to light during a city meeting where officials were there from HUD and tenants actually just had enough. You know, how do you deal with a housing authority when nobody has an answer, nobody picks up the phone, and nobody resolves anything? So they aired their their, their complaints uh, in front of the city and the feds out there, and uh, guess what? They have seized control of the Indianapolis Housing Authority. You know, uh, there's no other choice. Now, whether there will be greater issues with this place other than mismanagement, and uh, not doing an absolute thing to help anybody and letting people live in absolute dire conditions. I don't know. But as of now, uh, the feds, HUD, and the city, including its mayor, have seized the housing authority, have fired or terminated or effectively muted the entire executive level of the housing authority. They no longer have control over any decision there. And they have assigned a HUD official to effectively take over as the position of the entire board. And they are now starting to actually uh, fix grievances, answer the phones, and deal with things. You know, one thing I want to tell you guys is through this, you've seen many videos on my channel where people, I think we've probably addressed close to 300 housing authorities where they have stolen money, faced insolvency, spent every nickel and uh, on a fraud and uh, left the housing authority penniless and other situations like in new york where they may indict up to 91 employees fired entire board so this is not unusual at all i think effectively a lot of people believe the housing authorities are the feds or hud but they're not hud is a different agency it's a federal agency your local housing authority is a public agency filled with normal people they're not federal employees and with very little federal over uh, regulation or oversight until it's too late this is the kind of situation we fall in. Now, do I blame HUD for that? Of course not. I think HUD's probably one of the best agencies in terms of helping people when they can. And they have a big, a monstrous job to do because you're dealing with people that put profit above and greed, above the care and maintenance of buildings and landlords and fraud. And in some cases, housing authorities have operated with impunity and the ability to sit there and use federal funds to commit fraud to burn up all the money, do nothing, train employees to never answer phones, to never address anybody's grievances, and to act more like an insurance company that denies every claim that's out there. And the further this, to exasperate it greater, is the fact that the housing authority has the ability to use federal funds to purchase properties, thus making it a project-based building. They So not only are they poorly administrating their job, uh, not fairly giving out vouchers, not even uh, showing an example of professional misconduct. But now, not only are they the person that control of the voucher that the persons are receiving, but they're also going to be your landlord. And unfortunately, when the housing authority and its poor budget and poor management owns the building and is also your landlord, it means that they don't really want to fix anything. Because if anybody complains, then you you see the contradiction here. Do you see the problem? with the housing authority being both a landlord and the person that approves the vouchers, it's a terrible idea. It's an extreme conflict of interest. And this is how housing authorities get their doors stormed by the feds. People get indicted. This is how we learn two or three years into it or where HUD doesn't audit as soon as they can find out that they're penniless and have no money left. They're insolvent completely. The employees have stolen every nickel out of the building or we find that they have to seize the whole building fire everybody that's in charge and then place or inject a federal employee in there to actually get things done. And so that's what we have. Now, the characterization that they're giving for the Indianapolis is pretty fair. Mismanagement, 
But let's be honest. I think that's a very, very uh, soft tone. I think that there's a greater issue there. And I think that the further they dig into this, the more they're they're going to find that probably a, a level of the deception and fraud has been committed there. But I understand that investigations need to be done. They need to review the books and see what's happening. So right now, I think the only thing that they can determine is that nobody's really doing anything to help anybody over there at the Housing Authority. So we're paying people to work in a building to do nothing, very little. They're not doing the housing quality inspections. They're not on time with anything. They're not completing paperwork. Now, of course, the housing authority's position would be that they're overwhelmed. Well, why did you get? Why did you decide to open a housing authority? Why did you ex- decide to accept money from the federal government if you couldn't manage it? It isn't like you didn't know this when you started, when you opened that housing authority. It isn't like you didn't know this when you decided to work there or even manage that building. So to sit there and act as if all of a sudden you can't manage it, but yet 3,000 other housing authorities have managed, uh, managed to do their job and do it ethically, I'm not buying that either. So I think in terms of looking at this, I hope that many of those people that were in charge of this, that left people in deplorable conditions, end up indicted for a number of reasons, and that the feds do stay involved there so they're able to straighten this out and actually put educated people in the building that actually want to do the job effectively, do it professionally, but do it with a little bit of care because you can't leave people that just that just got a voucher that may have been homeless, disabled. You've got children that are disabled in oxygen machines with parents that barely have any income because they may be disabled. And so we're going to leave them in rats and roaches. And it's the opinion of the housing authority. Well, we, we can't be bothered with that. We're not, we're, we're not, we're not being paid enough or incentivized enough to do anything. So we're just going to let people rot in the building. You see that kind of moral uh, character, that kind of ethical stance means that they need to fire everybody's ass in that building and they need to do a better job of screening and they, there needs to be more accountability and oversight in terms of this because this is how we we end up in it because when housing authorities are allowed to operate for years and years and years with very little oversight they'll act with an impunity and some housing authorities have managed to do it for a long time which means instead of being the very people that should defend your federal rights they end up being the very people that victimize people that are already victims do you see a problem with that so that's, I think that's the question of the hour. I get a lot of clients call all of us, hey, Jay, well, you know, I just believe everything that Nancy and Bob tells me at the housing authority because they work at the housing authority, they must be an authority. Well, no, they're just as susceptible to being a crook, a fraud, and everything else as every other human. The fact is many of them have just haven't been caught. So, you know, when we look at this, I think that this situation deserves the same level of service that those executive people that allowed this to go on should be a recipient of what I would call Section 9, which would be three hots and a cot in a federal prison. Since they are best served by giving out vouchers and then indenturing people into properties they don't want to care for, then maybe they should be indentured to a federal prison so they can get a lease for 10 or 15 years and they can get their three hots and cots and not pay any rent there. They can simply survive in the federal prison system. So they can receive their Section 9 voucher, hopefully within the by the end of the year. Because anybody that's going to get into this and not give a shit and run a housing authority that way, where they literally have to seize the building, needs to be put out to pasture. Okay? All right, moving on. Good morning, L. Hampton. Thank you for the live comments. See, Blanton, another one. I'll tell you what, these guys keep falling like dominoes. I still think that Marissa Fudge, which is the lady that uh, used to be the director of uh, HUD, I think the effect of what she left, her not only her reputation and how she handled business is still playing out. Even though she's retired, I'm still seeing really big actions by HUD, which makes me excited. I just hope that whoever the new director of HUD is going to be, that they have the same amount of steam and will to continue to shut down these frauds that to claim their uh, housing authorities when in fact all they are is just trying to drain every last penny out of this and leave people in horrifying conditions so mr mister gotcha good morning c blanton damn c blanton goes on to say and so if this keeps happening what's going to happen ha's you know we're we're reaching a critical point uh, with all housing authorities we're starting to see at a high level now that housing authorities, having people purchase 
housing authority and trying to use federal funds to give out vouchers is a bad idea. It's been a bad idea from the beginning because we're not checking the moral, ethical character of the people that are working these cases that are caseworkers. There's not enough time for the feds to cover every housing authority and give a lot of federal oversight. And so I think that we are finally starting to see the devastating results of decades of mismanagement, of hiring people that are next to a crackhead to work there, and all the unethical behaviors going on. In other words, we're taking people that are already either a victim or people that are already susceptible to being a victim, and then they're getting and they're basically being re-victimized by housing authorities. And uh, I think that a lot of this has become so personal for many people. You know, the discrimination, harassment, and so many things, and having housing authorities not do much. We really need to examine what it would mean to have a new system. It would be a lot better, even if they only had one federal employee in every housing authority that oversaw everything there. If we could spend trillions on wars and bombs, why can't we install at least one HUD employee at every housing authority, or at least have some kind of review every six months, at least that we can do away with the system. The system that's in place for housing vouchers and subsidies is so fraught with fraud and all the things going on, it just simply does not work. It barely works. It's a broken system that manages to help some, but pretty much ruins everybody else. And in the midst of it, if you take even the most moral person and they see an opportunity to commit fraud, they're really just tempting people that are already low paid to act be bad characters at housing authorities. So you're taking a situation and it's become exasperated. And so you can no longer really trust anything that you're being told. You don't know that you're being treated fairly. And then I'm seeing a high level of prejudicial behavior from housing authorities. And then the bigger thing is, if you can't, if the housing authority cannot manage from the budget that they're given by HUD or the feds or Congress, then maybe it's time to say, hey, you know what? Why don't we call HUD? Let them know. We've gotten into something we can't handle. Uh, here's our paperwork. We like to get out of this. Would anybody like to buy the housing or they can do a better job? But instead of doing that, instead of owning up that you're running a Mickey Mouse operation with an organ grinding monkey at the front end of that deal and giving up that housing authority, they continue on until they almost push yourself into what we see these days. And what that means is they continue on until there's nothing but a fraud. And we're seeing these, these housing authorities drop like dominoes across the country. And again, in many places in the country, a lot of them have not had any federal oversight or barely any. So the fraud has gone on for a long time. You've got you've got housing authorities with employees that act more like gang members, a gang of workers that decide they don't like your attitude or that you make too many requests, that they're going to treat you like they are somehow in a gang, like in a gang, like a Los Angeles police do. Now, for us to have a housing authority that's supposed to be administrating uh, federal programs and giving out vouchers, but yet they're acting more like gang members that only that, that are showing signs of prejudicial behavior to only give to who they like and what they want shows a degradation of both mental health and the fact that we're probably hiring hookers and drug dealers to work in the housing authority. Now, what does that, do I mean that literally? No, but I mean the mentality of ignorance. So if we're not going to pay enough, then only the most ignorant bastards are going to work there. And when you get to that level, then you're really just like the jailer and the inmates, right? You're not being treated any better than you would be as had you been arrested and thrown in the county jail and the guard talks shit to you. Nobody signs up for that. This federal program did not include, will issue a voucher, treat you like a hooker on 3rd Street, and talk to you like shit. All requests will be denied, and you're annoying me every time you call or email me. So we've decided we'll find any way we can to terminate you. That is the game that's playing out with a lot of these housing authorities. And it's time for an end to this. It's become too much. You know, when we're acting, uh, when these housing authorities are acting just strictly with impunity. All right, so moving on down. You know, guys, I get sometimes on a, <clears throat> I get on a tear in my videos because it becomes... It hits a spot inside of you where it really does just kind of piss you off because you think about it and you think, why do we, why can't, why can't we just simply do the job, find out whether people call by, give them the voucher and if people call and they need something, then just give it to them. Why, how do we reach this point where we're treating people like inmates? I mean, how do we even get to this? How, how, how bitter do we have to be? If you hate your job that much, 
go take your car, drive it up a fucking bridge, quit the first clock out of your job, quit, then drive it off a bridge because nobody needs your bullshit at the housing authority. People have enough to deal with without dealing with people that are complete assholes at the housing authority. People are fed up with it. I'm telling you, and let me tell you something. In tough times, you're already messing with people that are already desperate. They've already been victimized. They don't have a lot of income. They're already disabled. Life is stressful. Do you really want them to come out there with a, with a match and a gas a can to show you how they feel? Then I think it's time the housing authorities either have the pits come in and redo this, figure out a new system of things, or we have better, we have more oversight and regulation of the housing authority and how they operate because in the end, this is going to end badly. You can't, you can't do that to people that have nothing to lose already. It's reaching a boiling point across the country with people and housing authorities. And then you further exasperate that by a pandemic that tightens the market, that causes inflation on houses. Now we have less housing on the market. And so what we have here is a lit Roman candle waiting to go off. And people are fed. I mean, they're fed up to the end. I'm, my office is constantly drowned by people. You know, in the beginning, when I started doing consulting work, I used to think a lot of my clients possibly had mental health problems and that the things they were telling me were rather delusional. But the longer you work, the more you start to realize those that are delusional compared to those that are actually telling me the truth is a mixture of about 1% delusional and 99% of the people that contact me have actually very verifiable stories, even if they have schizophrenia. I've learned over time that this is an actual reality. It is actually that depraved. Now, does that suggest every housing authority in America operates that way? Certainly not. There are many that deserve uh, award after award for just excellence. But I got to tell you that many more. Uh, look, these gangs, of, these these little gangs that are operating in these housing authorities and all the attitude and the prejudicial behavior. This isn't 1930. You cannot indenture and disrespect people that way ever. You don't do that. And to do that to people that are most desperate in this country says a whole lot about the shit you are. So, you know, from my perspective, even I'm fed up with it. All right, moving on down to these live comments. I probably already said too many bad words on YouTube. Hopefully I don't get penalized. But, you know, I'd rather, I, you know what, I'd rather be genuine than somebody that runs around acting like a candy ass and sugarcoats everything. You can either understand it as a truth or you can understand it as somebody t doing nothing but exchanging pleasantries. All right. And, and so Star goes on to say, in my hood, Pennsylvania, a small city is missing almost a million dollars in gift cards. That's not a surprise. Sound like Bob and Sally were working in the back office and decided to go and buy some Gucci and Prada for the self and then uh, steal it out the government coffer there. Silver Fox Good morning from North Carolina. I'm wanting to buy a, you know, I got a cord for my camera right in the way of these comments section here. Uh, I want to buy and send an uh, app next year to July to keep. So it sounds like some Fox, you're interested in the HUD, HUD, HUD home ownership program. That's good. See, Blanton, so if the city owns HA, it's city employees that are doing these deeds. Well, just because the city, let me, let me rectify uh, what we do know about PHAs. They're almost always privately owned, but in some cases, the city may have some employees in there, okay? But most often not. So it can be city-owned, but still have ordinary street walkers working in there, ordinary gang members and prostitutes processing casework. And so why do I why do I refer to people in such disparaging ways? Because I've not seen anything that would dictate that I should speak about a lot of the Housing Authority employees uh, that have done what they've done uh, to, to, to even our, our clients that I should speak to them any, any any better. In fact, I feel that I'm comparing them uh, quite evenly with the type of people out there. Now, the one thing I want to do say is even in a bad housing authority, you will have a few people that will try to do the right thing. But you ever heard about the old turnover at the housing authority? When you don't sign up, when you sign up for employment and you don't join the gang and you try to do ethical things, they'll put your ass out the door. So why do housing authorities have such a high turnover rate? A lot of people think it's because it's too much work and stress. No, it's actually people trying to do the right thing and then discover that basically you've got a little gang running the building and they're going to dictate how and when they violate everybody's federal rights. And so that's the more common logic behind why housing authorities have a high turnover rate it isn't the pay rate. It's because you got people that go in bright eyed, starry eyed, that want to help people, and they quickly learn 
that all their all their efforts to try to help are pretty much dismissed by an antiquated system that is really organized and run by little gang members that are doing casework. And it's not only the casework, it's managers. Managers tend to be the, the ones that uh, seem to really run that building. All right, so C. Clanton, the city owns a okay. cane. Sunshine, good morning. Hello, love your video from Cubs in Louisiana. Well, I'm a native of Louisiana, originally from Baton Rouge, so I know a little bit about that. But now that I've been a Texan for greater than 20 years, I think that I'm a little bit of a Cajun cowboy, if you want to call it that, or a coon ass, for those of you that understand what that means. Uh, Super Fox, it took me seven years when the girl told me was at the top of the list. Look, I'll tell you a little secret about housing authorities and their waiting lists. Back in the old days, they'd give you a number. And many of them won't do it anymore. And I'll tell you why. Because they don't want you to call an email every day. That's one of the reasons. But the bigger reason is, imagine a waiting list as a balloon. So we have 100 people. The housing authority just opened up on Monday, right? First time they've ever been open. And 100 people sign up. Now, you got that 100 people inside the balloon. You got the people at the top of the balloon. And you got people at the bottom of this balloon. Now, the reason I don't want to give out housing uh, waiting list numbers is because every new person that enters the balloon pushes those at the top up higher and those that were never had an important case even further down. So if you don't have a very good case, it means that even a year later, you actually could be much lower on that list than you ever thought. And so to keep people from burning down the housing authority or terrorizing employees in the parking lot, they don't really like to give numbers. And another tactic that I've seen is housing authorities giving everybody the same number, your number 58. The reason they might do that is simple. It makes everybody feel real good. But in fact, that 58 number can last seven years. And so it's a lot of mental foreplay. And many housing authorities administrative plan, they do as much as they can to either tell you that the list is too long to drive you away or They'll tell you a ridiculous number and in the, in the hope of, that you won't bother them thinking you're going to be in the next month or two. The reality of it is most housing authorities receive enough funding to process approximately 50 vouchers or more a month. So if you had a 200 number, you'd likely wait about four, four months. But uh, it really depends on a lot of things because funding issued to housing authorities come from different sources. So if the federal government approves funding of a million dollars to the homeless, two million for seniors, three million for domestic violence, then those, everybody that applied to that 100 people. So you're allowed to apply, but if they don't want to have funding for specific things, then only certain people could be selected from the list based on those three characteristics. So you see how dynamic waiting lists can be. And even further, those of you that are looking at lotteries, well, it just means an 18-year-old with no incentive to work whatsoever in life, has no problems, could just as easily win the voucher as somebody that is 108 with no eyes and no legs. Okay? So lotteries are a gamble. The problem is, who do you think is overseeing that bingo will when they spend those numbers privately from their office? So when Bob and Sally are there giggling, popping champagne, smoking cigars, and not worrying and not in the phones, in the toilet... And they're spending the bingo. Well, they keep on spending it until they spend it to every friend. So that way, the mate, so when they have the Christmas party, they can hand out vouchers to the maid, their lawn man, and all their friends and constituents. But ordinary people like you might wait a lifetime. So don't ever think that a lottery is just as purely ethically as you might imagine. Unless they can prove that lottery is being done by a third party, then I would imagine that it is filled with as much fraud as everything else. Well, we've been in a wild tear today, but I don't want to spook anybody. Uh, you know, the thing about it is some of the things that I'm saying are being characterized uh, to be a little bit more magnificent than they are. Do understand that. Uh, but that's that's me taking uh, and looking and thinking uh, about all the different cases we've dealt with. And I, it does reach those heights. But for most people, I think that dealing with your local housing authority will be relatively okay. In fact, um, what's more shocking is... It only takes, uh, you know, if I had to look at this, if I had to say out of 3,300 plus housing authority, I would say less than probably 500 are bad, okay? But when you see this play out, it does make you paranoid, doesn't it? Of course, I don't help it sometimes in my video because it incenses me. And some, I don't want to make sure, I don't want to leave everybody here thinking that every housing authority acts that way. Certainly not, okay? There are a lot of housing authority employees that deserve like I said, they deserve a few awards just for the, the work and the time and how ethically they deal with people. 
So don't leave this thinking every every place is crooked. I don't want to, especially if you're suffering from mental health issues, I don't want to exasperate paranoia or delusions, okay? I don't want you to think it's everybody. So, guys, I'm going to start closing this up now that I've had my fun with it. But uh, I think that this is the most unfortunate circumstance for out there. I think that now that we have a federal employee, there's no choice but things to operate good. I think it's going to take a bit of time for them to sort out all the things that have gone wrong and to establish a new system of how to do it right. Uh, I hope it lasts for those of you that live there and utilize it. Housing Authority. So that being said, guys, if you guys are out there and you're from another place and maybe not even that city, if you're struggling with uh, housing or navigating the system, vouchers, subsidies, emergency housing, or you've got other issues related to your landlord, you might want to reach out to our office. But look, the services we offer are consulting. I help people learn what they can't get answers to, help them kind of navigate that system. And this would be considered as a last option or resort. It means you've tried every effort that you can. You've tried to work with HUD. You've tried to work with the Housing Authority. You've tried to work it every way you can. We should always be a last resort for those of you that actually need help. If all of your efforts have yielded you nothing, then maybe and only then should it be appropriate to reach out to our office. And you can find us at www.section8consulting.com. And trust me, I'm just as spicy and humorous and genuine, even in my calls. So, But if you um, if you have a problem with a few profanities, you might, meet, might find me difficult to, to survive at times. But I think that profanities do have a place in this world, especially when we're trying to show the true gravity of a situation, how serious it can be. So, well, guys, I really, really enjoyed talking with you. And now that I have taken uh, some partial time off, we should have several videos coming out the next few days. I don't know what they're going to be, but I can assure you if I'm in the mood that I am today, it'll be pretty good. So you might want to join, subscribe or like or whatever it is you guys do on YouTube. And uh, we'll talk again and see what we can uh, discuss in terms of you guys getting uh, housing and vouchers in a safe and uh, in a safe and uh, reasonable way okay all right goodbye for now